Yes, good afternoon, everyone. It's always wonderful to join with you. We are here. So right now we are going to ask you as usual to just center into this moment now. Close your eyes and just be in this moment now. Recalling that this is the only moment now. And just allow yourself to rest in the moment, letting go of all outer distractions of the mind, all different focuses. Just let it all drop and center into now. Feel the peace that comes from within, the light that you truly are which is within, which is everything really, which is all that you truly are. You being eternal, the world being ephemeral. All that really is, is here and now. And that is what you are in truth. So we are here and you are as well. We are eager to talk with you about anything. And of course, this moment, we are here to help you along in your awakening, to help you wake up from the dream, the illusion, from mindlessness to mindfulness. That's what we are here to help you with, to wake up to true reality and love. So with that said, we will have much more to say as we are aware of many questions that are really going to dive deeper. So we are ready for it. The first question. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, the first one has a little, a little, I'll call it a backstory. One line of questions always starts with the issue of quote, how did this world get so crazy, unquote, such as violence, poverty, disease, pollution, etc., or some variation of that? And the answer is, of course, we chose it, we created it, we have free will, and we are responsible. So there's a couple questions based on this. The first one is, maybe these are not, in quotes, bad decisions, but all part of a larger drama that is perfectly laid out to circle us back home in our own time, according to our own unique scripts. So first of all, we will address the first portion of this, that it was stated, how did this world come to be the way that it was or that it is, that it really seems to be, you see. And it was stated that it is a choice. It was a choice. And we want to help you with that, that yes, you made a decision to come here. You really did. That goes for everyone, not just the individual who asked the question. All of you, everything is a decision first. And after that, the rest of the question, again. Maybe these are not bad decisions but all part of a larger drama that is perfectly laid out to circle us back home in our own time, according to our own unique scripts. And yes. And we want to point out that the in quotes bad is not really what it is because bad is a judgment, you see. And what you want to just recognize is that is a wrong-minded decision. Does this make sense? Meaning, the mind made an error. 
Does this call for punishment? Not at all. It calls for forgiveness. Everything here is a great call for forgiveness, which is love. So at any rate, the next part of this question. And then the second part to the question is, you used the term scripts to describe a life course or plan, I think. What is a script in this sense? The script is what you actually wrote for your coming here. And this is something that the ego mind does not want you to remember. And so it is showing you many different things to distract your mind from the power of your mind, which really at this point, or always is the decision-making part of your mind. If you woke up and realized that it was the decision-making part of your mind that made the decision for all of your experiences in this life, which we are doing in quotes, because real life is not here, then you would look at it with the Holy Spirit and realize that you made the wrong decision. And so after that, you would want to make a different decision. Does this make sense? Now, the ego doesn't want you to wake up to that because in that you would decide against the ego. Does this make sense? Do you follow where we are going? I do. I if the um, questioner is there, perhaps he says yes. Wonderful. So, really, you have the ability to choose again in every situation. And it really is, your two choices are always this. What mind are you listening to? You see, you have the choice of listening to the right mind, which is the mind of the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit, or the ego mind, you see, which is the wrong-minded thinking. And so those are your choices. Of course, the ego will show you many different things and tell you that you have a multitude of choices, all in form. Does this make sense? But really, it comes down to the truth, which is you only have really two choices, either the Holy Spirit or the ego. makes it a lot easier. And how can you tell which voice you are listening to? Well, how does it feel? We have talked about this before. How does it feel? We said that there is a taste of bitterness in the ego. Does this make sense? Whereas the Holy Spirit has no taste at all. Not that they have, that it is bad taste or that it is tasteless, but it is formless. Does this make sense? We could see how jokes could be made about what we just said. Tasteless, formless, really. But yes, so you want to go toward the gentle voice, the loving voice, the voice of light. That is the Holy Spirit. Yes. Does this answer your question? He says, what is, is the script, though? Does it mean anything? Well, you wrote the script. You were the one who wrote the script. We know that that is not always easy to really understand, but literally, it was the decision-making part of your mind that wrote the script the decision to come here, the decision to experience, you see, all of it made by the mind. Does this make sense? Wonderful. Yes. And then <clears throat> there was um, another question that went on about script. So um, I'm going to ask that as well. Wonderful. Um, this person had an experience where he could feel either guides or angels, <clears throat> excuse me, or someone, friendly voices inside of me, and it felt like they were yelling and trying to reach me, trying to get me not to do something, but I did it anyway. 
The result was years of living with a bad decision. Can you tell me if these guides or angels were trying to quote unquote quote enforce the script unquote? Can someone go off script? If so, what happens then? Literally, you cannot go off script because the script is already written. So even when it seems that you have gone off script, it was actually part of your script. You see, there are no coincidences. There are no accidents. As far as the guides go, sometimes, well, actually everyone has guides, but sometimes there are those of you who can actually hear the guides and that might just be intuition. You might hear voices like this one or anything of that nature. And there could be a prompting for you to go in one direction, you see. And actually, it would be more of a come this way. Does this make sense? But if you want to understand this, yes, just trust that what we said, there is no real off script. There are no coincidences and there are no accidents. Everything is already written in the script, including your quote unquote going off script. So that's what we have to say for that. Thank you, it's very clear. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So we are ready for the next question or another question. The questioner says, I fear being loving and projecting only love all of the time because I fear that if I am that way, I'll attract a lot of people who won't leave me alone and will annoy me. How did you deal with the annoying people who weren't your favorite, but who wouldn't leave you alone when you were Jesus? Well, first of all, let's talk about projections, projecting. So first of all, another thing we were saying as you were reading that question are all decisions, 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 you see. So you have already decided that there will be those who will annoy you. So that's a decision. Does this make sense? Now, did someone annoy me in my lifetime as Jesus? Well, the thing is that anything that was felt I understood was actually my projecting out from myself onto another, you see. That I knew that it was not someone who was annoying me, but that was something that was coming from within me. And so in that, you work with the Holy Spirit to unwind your mind from that thought. Does this make sense? And as far as favorites go, there are none. Everyone is equal. Does this answer your question? If the questioner could answer, if that was his question was answered. Yes, thank you. Wonderful. You're very welcome. And another question? Yes, uh, how to be in uh, the decision-making mind in order to make a profound choice? Well, first of all, first of all, accept your role as the decision-making mind, you see, that you are a mind and you are not mindless. The ego wants you to think that you are mindless, you see, and that's what the world really is, a mindless display. Does this make sense? Waiting. And so really recognizing that, in that you can then begin to use the decision-making part of your mind, that nothing outside of you is actually outside of your own mind. Does this make sense? Yes. So how to be in the decision-making part of the mind? Well, first decide what voice you will listen to, Holy Spirit or the ego. Choose the Holy Spirit 
and you will be guided correctly. And that is a decision. Does this make sense? Okay, good. Wonderful. We really want you to wake up to the decision-making part of your mind because it was the decision-making part of your mind that had you come here. It is not wrong or bad. It's an experience, you see. Remember, you remain innocent and pure and love forever, unaffected by anything that seems to happen in the illusion, in the dream. We also want you to wake up to yourself as the dreamer, not a figure in the dream. Does this make sense? Yes, I remember, I remember pulling a veil over me. Yes. So that being said, that puts you in the decision-making part of the mind. You see, to be the dreamer and see yourself as the dreamer and not a figure in the dream. You see, the figures can also be thought of in the victimhood way or the victimizer. It's all the same. And you begin to actually come to recognize it all as being the same. Victim, victimizer, it's still the same. Does this make sense? Although the mind will tell you it's different, it is not different. It is all from the original error of the false idea of separation. So, but you said you remembered pulling the veil over you. Yes, and I don't, I don't know how to lift it. Well, you give it to the Holy Spirit to help you see it correctly, to see the error. Does this make sense? And then the yes. Holy Spirit will guide you to make a different decision. And in that, the veil will be lifted, you see. Remember, it is a step-by-step -step process and an unwinding of the mind. You pulled the veil over your mind, and yes, you did, and this goes for everyone. All of you pulled the veil over your own mind. And to get out of that is to wake up to what we were just saying, making a different decision, you see, and asking the Holy Spirit to be your guide along, along the way. And the Holy Spirit will just show you where and when it first occurred and then help you take the different route. Does this make sense? Yes. Wonderful. Okay. Then another question. How far does our illusion extend? Uh, when we look out at the universe through our telescopes, are we seeing other planets and stars as they are? It's all illusion. Anything physical is illusion. Does this make sense? Waiting for And of course, again, with decision, how much do you want to see? And also the belief that space and time are real, you see. We want to bring that into this too, because really, this is all also belief. Your belief in these things make them seem real. Your belief in yourself as separate keeps the story of separation going on in your mind, you see. Yes. So then you look and you ask, what is it that I truly want? Ask yourself this, what is it that I truly want? Is there anything in the world that can give me what I truly want or is waking up the only answer? And of course, you know, our answer for that is waking up is the only answer. So, but also no one is judging you if you want to see into the universe through a telescope. So lighten up about that too. No one is telling you not to enjoy things here, you see, but we are telling you to remind the mind that this is not real and this is not your home. So you do not, then make it even more real to your mind. 
Does this make sense? You don't make it more comfy and cozy for the long term. And by the way, there's no long term, thank God, in this plane of existence at all. It's just a dream. Yes. Wonderful. And another question. My higher self said to me, pay attention learn your lesson how do i know what my lesson is and what do i pay attention to and the person apologizes hoping they make sense um, and says perhaps i should ask my higher self but it rarely speaks to me thank you of course yes you can always ask your higher self but we are going to say what is the lesson the lesson is to learn to love love like you've never loved before love like you truly are, you see. That's the lesson. And part of this lesson of love is forgiveness. Forgive everything. And we speak of forgiveness in the way that we speak of it in truth, which is unconditional and total forgiveness. That's all inclusive forgiveness, including yourself. Pay attention to how you feel, because how you feel will guide you throughout and you will be able to tell what the next steps are and also how far along you are. Does this make sense? Now we also don't want you to begin to track yourself and track your progress. That would defeat the purpose. Does this make sense? That would distract your mind. And by the way, the ego is very fond of that part of the process, which is its own process the ego's process, part of the ego thought system. Check out how far along you are and where you fall short. That's what the ego has to say. And it's also showing you how you are not stacking up compared to so-and-so and all of that. It's just a distraction away from the truth of your being. You see, and as we were saying, the power of the mind. It doesn't want you to know that the power is in your mind. Because as soon as you truly recognize this, you can make a total different decision to decide against the ego. Does this make sense? And it's not to decide against the ego as though the ego is real, but recognizing that it is not real and just not following it anymore. Does this make sense? Uh, waiting for the answer. Wonderful. Really want you to know the ego is really not real. It really does not exist. It's only the belief in the ego that makes it seem like it exists and makes it seem big, but it's not big at all. Once you release your belief in it and let it go and stop being so serious about it, but lightening up about it instead, and even cracking a smile here and there when you notice it, it will dissipate and eventually you just will stop noticing it completely yes thank you you're welcome i have another question wonderful my truest deepest most sourceful experiences are always formless on the prime source love light supreme and if a body appears in such experiences they are all neutral images that do not feel like the true me are angels and all higher level beings out of scripts or are all formalized beings as such part of some script everything here is part of some script everything here that you perceive and experience is actually illusion. We know that this may seem and feel very strange, but even you are an illusion. And what we are talking about, we're talking to the form part of you, you see. When we speak to you, we are actually speaking not to the you that you think that you are, not the you, the personality, and none of that, even the formless that you think that you are, but actually the decision-making part of your mind. Does this make sense? 
Yes, yeah, so perception or parsing up what is one is illusion. Yes, it is. All of it. All of it. And eventually you will see, and we will tell you this because this is true. Even we are a part of this illusion, you see. Here to wake you up from the dream of the illusion, but we want to just help you to understand that nothing here is real. Does this make sense? That may be very surprising for some, but we really want you to recognize that absolutely nothing here in the dream is real. Now there are reflections that can come through and they are simply stepping stones of love for you to come home. Does this make sense? Yes, it feels so true and good to hear this pure flood of real reality. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It is always our pleasure. And we thank you for this question. Yes. Okay. Are all physical beings unconscious that this is a dream? When you say home, do we get to go home and stay at home when the current body dies? Absolutely. And that's also a decision. And so once the body dies, you see that there was never a body. You will see that you were never the body. It was never you. And you are free. Does this make sense? Waiting for an answer? Yes. Wonderful. But of course, to stay home is something you want, yes? Yes. So have this in your mind that that is what you truly want. You see? And that it is so. Waiting. But also remember that the decision was made for you to come at this time. And once you are done, make a decision. And you don't have to come back. Does this make sense? I feel as I've said this before. Then it is so. And another question? Could you um, elaborate a little bit more on um, saying that we are part of the illusion? Um, when, when, of course, in miracles teaches us that there's the son of the yes. son of God. You know, I always think of child of God. Is um, It's so hard for us to really wrap our minds around that. Um, trying to think. So I know these energies come, seem to be here, um, a bird or yes. a, a worm or a human being. And then some of us do experience angels. Angels, yes. Did all of that, is that just all just the mind of just, there's no other way to say it, the mind of God? is. Yes, as we were saying, or you have also read that there are those who are sent, the Holy Spirit, you see, the angels, they are sent to help you along here in this dream, you see. God would not leave you bereft. But were they... Um, created at the same time we were? They were created, or the way that you experienced them were created when the calling was made. Okay. Does this make sense? So as soon as the first error occurred, God sent forth all of its ability to reach you, you see, which are what you consider angels, Holy Spirit, does this make sense? So you are not left bereft because God said, come back. 
And here are the guides who will help you. Does this make sense? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. And another question. Yes, uh, once lucidity dawns and all is known to be one's own mind's contents displayed by its own self, does the dream then dissipate soon thereafter because all that previously held the dream world together absent? Say the last part again. Uh, because all that previously held the dream world together uh, is absent. Is gone. Is gone. So, of course, how can then there be anything after that if nothing is maintaining the dream? Does this make sense? Yes, perfectly, logically, soundly correct. Wonderful. Wonderful. Questioner says, I was angry that we are stuck in this world and cannot see heaven. And you said the anger was my ego and the veil of forgetfulness was my choosing. And I accept all that. I also asked, why can't I just come home if I simply asked to? And the reply was, quote, you don't really want to, unquote. If you... If you truly, truly wanted to come home, you would let go of everything here. That means all of the things that you think that you value here, you would see them as nothing and you would let them go. Does this make sense? And this is why we say we walk you step by step to unwind your mind from the dream so that you can come home in a gentle way. We cannot rip it out of your hands, so to speak. We can't make it so that you are back home without first seeing the gentleness that comes before. Does this make sense? And that is forgiveness. So he says he believes the reason is that he's gotten used to the pain and it's all he knows that it's all he can know. And the idea of heaven is just words. So why can't we just bust through the veil together at least for one minute so we could be shown heaven to help us let go of this world. And we are going to tell you that you can bust out of this illusion for a minute. You absolutely can. That's what we were walking you through in the initial beginning of this session was to close your eyes. And you, it is a, it's an absolute must that you actually do close your outer eyes to the outer world and just go within. And when we do this, we don't mean within the body, but just go within, meaning you let go of all of the ideas of the world, of the dream, and you center into yourself in silence. And it literally can be but a moment. And you can completely reconnect with source, with God, and be it just a moment. And you will have progressed mightily, you see. And you may not recognize it altogether when you come back to the form world, but in that moment, just know that you have traversed light years if there were distance. So. Well, he goes on, when I asked to come home, I was crying and I've been thinking about suicide every day. I still do. Yet I am being told I do not really want it. I feel like I'm being asked for 100% purity for perfection. It doesn't seem fair to ask that of a human being. Well, we're going to tell you who is talking when that is being said. The 100% perfection. That is not spirit. That is not the answer, but that is the ego. And in its guilt, it wants you to feel the guilt, you see. It doesn't want you to, to let go of the idea of guilt. Does this make sense? Yes. 
Yes. Wonderful. And know that the idea of suicide comes from the ego. That is an ego guided tactic to kill you because it wants nothing more than for you to die because it's so stupid. It doesn't know that it would go to, we just have to put that in there. Take it lightly, take it lightly. Try this, try this for a little bit when it says, and you may feel the full on feelings that it will give you to commit suicide. Try to crack a smile, try to laugh at it. Try to laugh at the ridiculous nature of it. It is illusion, you see. And it's illusion wants you to die, you see. So, live by turning to love. The way out of this dream is to love, which is to forgive. That is how it is done. So, so, is the light in meditation, is that showing us heaven? Yes, it is a glimpse of heaven, yes. We want you to realize that you, in your true nature, are literally just light. Does this make sense? You are just light, there is nothing else. You are light, and there is no form in this light. You are simply light. So when you do experience light in meditation, you are touching on yourself, you see. Your higher self, your capital self, who you really are, which is heaven, you see. So yes, that is a glimpse of heaven. Connect with it more and more, and you will begin to experience it more and more even in your eyes open kind of way because you will begin to sense it, you see, and notice it. There's another question. Okay, this is better than good. Wonderful. It's always good to hear that. Well, we knew that though, but it's always wonderful when you join with us in feeling that. So thank you for joining. So I have another question. Wonderful. Uh, it seems like we're not able to make the decision inside the dream. Once we're out, we make the decision? You can make the decision here and now. That's what we are talking about. It's time to wake up to the decision-making part of your mind because even in the dream, you are there. You can make a decision. You are a mind, you see. You are not a victim of the world. The world does not exist. Everything that you seem to see, it is nothing but a reflection of something that's going on in your own mind. Does this make sense? Mm. The contents of your mind. And you can tell which ones are truly the contents of your mind by the reaction that you have. Does this make sense? Yeah. But why do we have to support this physical form? Well, how do we want to put this? Because there's an underlying tone to that question. What's that? <laughs> well, can we, for instance, go into a cave, close our physical eyes and go within <laughs> until the body runs out of fuel? He would accomplish nothing really. Remember, you're also here to represent love who sent you. That is to forgive and bestow compassion and kindness throughout the world in all that you do and all that you think, you see. Now, you cannot quite do that if you go hide yourself in a cave. Do you agree? Yes. And by the way, that sounds like suicide to us. <laughs> and on another note, to lighten the mood about that, every death is a suicide. Because every death is a decision of the mind. So. That's what I'm asking.
That's what I'm asking. Wonderful. So basically, the only reason is because you want to represent love here. You want to bring forth the true essence of your being as much as possible so that you can show that truth exists. Does this make sense? So that to all your brothers and sisters, you can show that love truly does reign supreme. And how do you do that? But by being an example of love in action. Does this make sense? Yes. And that also, we were saying, also is in thought. That means whatever thoughts you think, you want to think thoughts of love. That's becoming more mindful rather than remaining mindless. Does this make sense? The mindless mind will think lots of erroneous thoughts that have nothing to do with love, but it can be quite opposite of love. You want to really gain control of that and start to turn to love and make a decision here and now to think only loving thoughts, no matter what it is about, and no matter who it is about, and so on. Does this make sense? Yes, it is a struggle for many to feed themselves at this time. Well, we have to tell you this too. This is also a decision. This is something that can be so difficult for humans to really understand. But truly every situation, every experience that you witness here in the dream is a decision. Okay. So even those who have trouble being able to feed themselves, be it poverty or whatever, that is a decision on their part and part of their script, not yours. Does this make sense? Yeah, yes. And you cannot help them by becoming that yourself, you see. To help them, you must lift the veil, not draw it over further. Does this make sense? Yes, so our responsibility is to decide with love by yes. asking the Holy Spirit to yes. look upon every moment with us? Yes, absolutely. And in that, you will see only love and you will be shown only love and you will recognize what is not love. And the things that are not love, you will dismiss, you see? Waiting. Because truly all of these things are also an ego ploy to distract you away from the truth of your being. You are here once again to represent the love who sent you, you see, which is God, who is to show you that you are without limit, that you are without fear, but all love and all light and unlimited by nature, you see that you are not of this world. So can we trust our needs will be met? Absolutely. 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 And another question. You said that you will help us. What does the Holy Spirit do to assist us when we are in need? How is this accomplished? What we do is we show you the core of the first reason that you feel that you need. Does this make sense? How do we want to put this? We want to be able to put this in such a way that you can understand. We will not help you believe the dream further, but help you to awaken from the dream, you see. So when you ask for help, the help that we give you is to show you the areas in which we can help you choose again. And so that's really the question that you want to ask is, please show me how to look on this with peace or help me to see this the way it really is. Help me to see the truth, you see. 
help me to see this so that I may wake, awaken even more, you see. Does this make sense? So we will not take you down the road to drive you further into the illusion, but we will help you uplift yourself out of the illusion by showing you where you can choose again. Does this make sense? So does uh, the, the choice include making the decision that I am always cared for, I'm always just knowledge of that truth? Absolutely. That's part of it, yes. Yes. And if you don't have that, we will help you see where the faulty decision has been made, you see, and then help you to reconcile that in such a way that you will be freed. Does this make sense? That would be forgiveness. So with the awakening is an empowering? Yes, it is. It is, it is about empowering, not dispowering, you see. And this is about appreciating your mind, not depreciating your mind. See, if we came in and did everything for you, it would be total depreciation of the power of your mind. And so what we do is we help you to recognize the power of your mind and make the right decisions. So, yes, awakening is empowering. Sleeping in is dispowering, you see. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you. Another question. I just heard closing the eyes as closing the quote unquote eyes, letter eyes. In other words, closing our or deactivating the active seeming separate personal Identity. localized me. Yes. When their distortionary presences are gone, the clear presence of heaven is wholly ready to flood in. Is this sort That's of what's absolutely. happening? Absolutely. And it is the shutting of the physical outer eyes. The illusion of that is actually turning off the awareness of yourself as an individual, which is the I that you were speaking of. Does this make sense? Yes. So that's the individual I or the personality or the person you see, the illusion, the identity that is not you. Beyond all veiling, story laden, pseudo me's. So yes. if the history is present, is it not the true you? Say this again. So if a history is present, is it not the true you in capital? You mean? If a story is there, is that not the true you? Yes, that's correct. Because you are without a story. In truth, does this make sense? There is no story of you in truth. The story of you comes from here. Does this make sense? Okay, perfectly clear, yes. Wonderful. There actually is no history. Remember, past does not exist. As soon as it's gone, it is gone. So, and all stories come from this plane of existence. Stories are the sleeping mind. Yes, historyless reality. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. The next question, I know you have said not to get hung up on the future, specifically what happens when we cross over. And I hope that I won't keep asking about this, but um, there's something I can't process. You've said that when we cross over, there's a healing, a welcome home, reuniting with true self, and that it is the same or similar for everyone. Is that true? Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Does this answer your question? Well, when we are conditioned by our religions and society to think in terms of reward versus punishment, heaven versus hell, are you saying that 
is all a fallacy. Everyone yes. experiences pretty much the same thing. Absolutely, because we have to remind you that religion, all of that is all actually untruth. Does this make sense? So our conduct here has nothing to do with what happens to us when we cross over. Correct, absolutely. Nothing here can touch who you really are. It is just a dream, you see. Think about it this way. You've woken up from a dream, a sleeping dream. Do you feel as though that has completely affected you and changed you here? Does this make sense? Yes. It makes sense. Yes, it makes yes. sense. Wonderful. He would like to know why do so many teachers make such a big emphasis on the desirability of awakening in this lifetime while they still have a body? Is that just a false assumption that it's desirable to awaken in this lifetime while I have this body? Let's let go of the idea of while you have this body and just awakening period here and now, you see. It doesn't have to do with a body. You see, when you are awakened, you forget about the body. You see, you don't see it as anything really, but part of the dream, you see. And so what it is, is it feels so good to be awake. That's why you want to wake up because it just feels so damn good to be awake and in your full and total power, which is love. So why not, you see? And that's our answer for that. Thank you. Thank you. So we can take some more questions, just a couple more. The Course in Miracles states it's a required course. What are we required to do here besides being happy and free and treating others with kindness? Forgiveness. Forgiveness. And by the way, as far as when it is said that this course is a required course, was actually meant for the scribe. Does this make sense? For Helen Shuckman? and her partner, Bill Thetford. It is a required course because they asked for it, you see. But what we also said was that this is a required course, whether it be this course or another course. Any course that leads you back home is a required course. Does this make sense? For awakening, does this make sense? Wonderful. So practice your forgiveness, practice love, practice kindness, practice gentleness, try gentleness. Okay. In all that you do and all that you think, be gentle on yourself, be kind to yourself. And in this will expand out from you to touch all you see. Because when you are gentle on yourself, you are actually including everyone. So there is another question. The Galaxy S10 uh, has a question. Uh, if you could just type it, I'd appreciate it. We find that very humorous. The Galaxy X10 has a question. The Galaxy has a question. So, um, well, uh, we're waiting for Galaxy S10 to uh, write a question. Can you do that? This will be our final question. if the galaxy does have a question. Um, we're waiting. Yeah, 
Okay, so uh, Galaxy S10, do you have a question? Yeah, there was a lot of buffering online. Uh, if, if he can type the question, is that possible? If not, we will conclude. Okay. Next time. Wonderful. So, with all of this, oh, wonderful. I'm sorry. I, he said, I, I don't have a question. I just wanted to say, I love you. And we love you too. And what a wonderful way to end this session. We want all of you to remember that you are loved in perpetuity. You are loved eternally. You are eternity itself. You are love itself. That is what you are. Remember this throughout all of your experience. You are held in love forever and this will never change. We love you. You are blessed. We thank you for joining with us. We always look forward to this and we are always with you and we are always loving you. You are blessed. Namaste.